Hello, everyone. Uh, Prashant Desai, I am your trainer for uh, Salesforce. So I, I hope like everybody can hear me. Give me a moment. So I hope uh, uh, everybody can hear me. Uh, if you have any problem, just let me know. Like, if you won't be able to hear me, you can ping me on the chat box. Dilip, Raj. Okay, so Suman, uh, I hope you can hear me, right? Okay, okay, fine. So uh, let's just start with uh, the training session. So like, uh, as you know, like uh, I'm, I'm one of the trainer who is uh, working with techie training. So uh, basically I just want to let you know about my corporate experience. I'm having seven years of experience into Salesforce development and admin. Uh, this is not just Salesforce development and admin. I'm having experience in designing and architecturing of an application. So like uh, MS Visio, uh, like uh, th there is various tool we have to use to design an application. So like MS Visio is one of them. Apart from that, uh, I, I used to draw the sequence diagram, which is helpful for Apex class. And apart from that, I am I'm I'm drawing the engineering diagram when I used to uh, design the whole system. So that would be the enterprise system. And I'm having more than five years of experience in Salesforce integration with external system like SMS Magic, Climb Loan API, AWS, SAP, ERP. So these are the things where I have done the Salesforce integration with the external system. And about my certification, like I have done Salesforce PD1, Salesforce App Builder, and uh, OCWCD and OCA. So let's start with Salesforce. So I hope like uh, most of uh, uh, you have heard about Salesforce so now these days, Salesforce captured the market very fastly, right? It is one of the famous, renowned CRM solution for the vendor, right? So CRM is like, as you can see on PPT, it is mentioned like customer relationship management. But basically, what is uh, what is the meaning of customer relationship management? So this is something as a as an organization. So let's say uh, let's say I would be taking an example of American Express. Let's say American Express is having you know the merchant those who are using the American Express payment gateway. They do have uh, let's say around twenty thousand merchant those who are using the MX Express payment gateway, right? So it is very, very difficult to keep contact with your 20,000 merchant on a daily basis, right? So for uh, American Express, it is very, very helpful. The salesforce.com is one of the good CRM where they can maintain the uh, merchant related information. Let's say their contact number, uh, their email ID, their follow ups, their email notification, right? So these are the extra thing we have to keep uh, track, like if we have to contact with the, all those 20,000 merchant. And this is not only the one thing if we have to contact with the merchant, apart from that, if there will be having any issue, so Salesforce is one of the place you can handle your customer's queries as well. 
and everything is handled means everything is automated and this is something which is provided by salesforce.com out of the box so earlier most of the you know uh, most of the things happen like uh, uh, like most of the guys you know very well like if you have to run a java application right you have to you have to deploy your java application or you have to deploy any of the application separately on machine then you have to manage all those things manually right while in case of salesforce everything is put it on cloud so you need not to worry about to set up your infrastructure you need not to worry about set up your anything else right you will be getting those software as a services so even in case of uh, 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 i don't know like have you worked on other applications or not but cloud versus non cloud if i'm talking about so cloud is somewhere where everything is maintained on cloud you need not to worry about how you will set up your machine how will set up your server everything is on cloud you just have to log in go into uh, that environment write a code that's it so that's why this salesforce crm is delivered as a software as a service model right so we'll keep talking about software as a service in a detail so let's move on to the next slide so this is your course content so i will walk through with each and every module what we'll learn and how we'll do that so guys uh, uh, let me uh, you know uh, let you know the few things like uh, uh trust me like uh will go will go through the path which is providing you a real time scenario right because uh like the way we would be learning the things it will give you a real time experience so that when you will be working on your salesforce task your like anything which would be related coming to the salesforce you will be able to connect it what we were discussed it during this uh, session right so let's start with module 1 so basically uh, 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 like sorry uh, i will be again coming on to the salesforce course content so salesforce it is containing admin and development both right so let's start with module 1 so module 1 is setup organization for users so this is something when you are land up onto the salesforce you have to set up organization for the users right so what does the mean to set up organization for the user so let's say you have a big organization into that big, big organization you have to manage the profile of users maybe few of the users is admin maybe few of them non admin Maybe few of them having the profile from marketing team. Maybe few of them profile from finance team, right? So we have to manage their profile as well. So that's what we'll do it in this module. And this is just not managing the profile. We can configure the user interface as well. So user interface is something which is specific to your profile. So let's say you are from admin part so you will be getting user interface as per as your profile if somebody would be coming from finance department they would be getting their user interface specific to them then the most of you know the things is depend upon the calendars and activities it is really, really important if you have to track your activities if you have to track your uh, you know like uh, whatever you are doing you, you have to uh, keep track your events so the third point is like set up activities and calendars this is one of the important thing which is the part of 
set up organization for users. The fourth point is configure search settings. So configure search settings is uh, like uh, most of you, you are aware about like if you have to search anything, there will be a search text box, right? So it's similar search text box, but you do have extra hand. You can configure this search text box from your own. So why I'm talking about configuration? Let's say you have to you have to make it this search box to search only few specific thing. That's why it is mentioned like configure search settings. You can modify search settings as well. So let's move on to the module two which is related with introduction with salesforce.com and data model. This is one of the foundation for Salesforce, right? So we'll walk through with the difference between salesforce.com and force.com, right? And then moving ahead, we'll discuss about standard and custom objects in the Salesforce. So standard object is like, which is which is already provided by Salesforce, while custom object we can create into the Salesforce. So once we'll come onto this topic, we'll discuss it in a day, right? So third point is complementing the second point. So creation of custom object and fields. So like. Third topic is based on your second topic knowledge. So if you have the concepts of second point, so you would be able to move on to the third point easily. That is what they said. Creation of custom object in fields, right? So this is something you have to do it from your own into the Salesforce or that is why they said custom custom means we can create it from our own side, right? Then uh, the fourth top topic is different type of field and uses. There is a typo mistake. It is mentioned fill F I L E D, although it is like F I E L D field. So we have to learn the different type of field and uses. So different type of field like, uh, let's say, boolean type, ID, string text right so these are the various type you know we have to learn like what would be the type of the field right A string boolean id there there are lots of the type so we'll keep talking about the type of field right so we are moving to module 3 it's object relationships so again uh, this is really, really important thing into the Salesforce. So there are various type of relationship in the Salesforce. So when I'm talking about relationship, so uh, again, you know, uh, this is something which we are talking about. Let's say we have two object, right? So what would be the relationship we have to establish between two objects? That is, you know, mentioned here the type of relationship. So master relationship, look up. So these are the relationship we have to establish between the two objects and it's depend upon your requirement, right? So again, we'll keep talking about this topic once we would be landed onto this module. Second one is roll up summary. Again, it is a part of relationship. And third is junction object, which is again a part of relationship, which would be helpful to establish the relationship between two objects. And the fourth topic is lookup filter. So lookup filter is, uh, I hope like as of now, you won't be able to grab at this meaning, but again, like as the name suggests, if you have to look into something, you can put it the filter and then you can get it the information right 
So let's move on to the module four, standard object in relationship between them. So as, as I told you into the module two, there is two things is provided by salesforce.com. Module two, second topic, the standard and custom object. So a standard object is, standard object are those object which is already provided by salesforce.com. So that's what we are discussing in module four. There are few standard objects we'll keep talking about and then the relationship between them. That's really, really important. So the first topic is saying the same thing. Account and contact are standard object, which is provided by Salesforce, right? So we'll keep talking about these standard object, where we are using, how we are using, but I will connect you one more thing like hope uh, you remember initially I was talking about uh, you know one of the uh, use case like American Express need to manage 20,000 merchant data right so module four first topic account contact is you know like very very helpful in case to manage those merchant data right so these are the standard object i'm just telling you like this is something you know the good example and we'll keep talking like how we can use it these standard object and what what is you know the meaning for a standard object in terms of uh, salesforce right so again second is account and assets again it is a standard object so third topic is again, it's opportunity and opportunity product. Fourth is product, price book, price book entry. Again, these are the standard object. And for fifth topic is currency management, right? So this is, this is also one of the, um, you can say like vital topic when you are, uh, when you are managing your currency management. So let's say if you are, doing uh, if you are doing or if you're dealing all those businesses in the in the dollar right or else in the euro or else in the pound right whatever is your business currency right so there is a you know the out of the box capability is provided into the sales force where you can manage the currency management as well uh, let's say if you're dealing the business in to the Indian rupees right so currency management is the place where you can set up your currency in dollar, in INR, whatever is your, you know, the, the country or whatever is the place you can set it up into the currency management. And again, sixth topic is lead and it's conversion in account. So just leave it like conversion and everything. So lead, account, contact and opportunity. These are the standard objects. It is already provided by Salesforce. Means we we can use it. These standard object, we are not able to delete it. We are not able to you know like we can do uh, you know lots of the activities, but we we can't it you know the we we can't it do anything like lead an account contact opportunity to remove it right. Because this is something is maintained by Salesforce, right? So let's move on to the module five. So standard page. So this is basically related with uh, uh, the page layout. So whatever is the page will be coming, um, you know, uh, you know, page uh, like you can say. Uh, I hope like most of you heard about uh, Visual Force page, right? So this is not something related with Visual Force page. This is something where you have to manage the layout, right? So layout, like uh, as I mentioned earlier, you have to manage the profile and then according to profile, you have to show the layout. So again, this is the part where you can manage the layout according to the department. So let's say in a single organization, there will be a probability to a multiple department, 
let's say finance department it department admin department then talent acquisition department so everybody would be doing their specific thing so talent acquisition they would be hiring the people releasing an offer getting the approval for you know the ctc these are the specific things is done by talent acquisition so similarly for finance department they are managing their invoices they are uh, you know approving the invoices they are sending some documents so every, every department would be performing their own specific thing, right so do you think like if we won't be able to manage the layout let's say just remove the module file we are not uh, managing any any page layout so let's say if finance department people will be coming into the sales force right at the same time talent acquisition department will be coming into the sales force both will be getting the same layout and it would be kind of messed up nobody able to get it their specific thing even they won't be able to understand how they can go through with the process right so standard page is something where we can manage the layout according to the department right so this is something so manage page layout page layout and their related list list view so list view is like you know if you have to look at the collection of the record so this is something you know the mention like list view will keep talking about i can understand like you won't be able to understand as of now i'm just giving you the overview what will do it later on record type home page component search layout so these are all the part where we can manage the layout so let's move on to the uh, module 6 So module six is a uh, really really important uh, module where you have to manage the whole organization, uh, you know, security settings, right? So if I'm talking about security settings, so this is something you have to manage. Who can see the record? Who cannot see the record? Who can edit the record? Who cannot edit the record? who will be able to create a record who will be able only to read a record right so i just you know like taking the few points we have to manage those things which is coming under the user management right so you can say like there, there are lots of the term like um, people are using like you can use the crud create fetch update and delete right so this is something you can imagine like you, we have to manage those things through this module so what are the topics will be coming user creation really really important without user creation nobody able to recognize their you know the login face profile object will let you know definitely but basically it is managing the profile of the people who can who can access the object right permission set again like you have to provide the read write access permission role hierarchy is like this is something you can imagine like uh, in your organization there will be hierarchy ceo then uh, under the ceo there will be a cfo under the cfo there will be a multiple directors right under the multiple directors there will be uh, you know the multiple uh you know uh, assistant manager or you know like you can say assistant directors right so those are, are the role hierarchy we'll keep talking about once we'll land onto this topic so as of now just park this topic so we'll keep talking about it later on so fifth topic is manage email administration this is something Uh, uh, uh we have to keep track on the email administration so email administration like who you want to send an email right so let's say like you don't want to send an email to these people you can exclude it if you want to send um, 
an email to few of the people you can include them right restrict login again it's a uh, as you know like we are discussing about the user management part so restrict login is something you have to provide you know you have to provide more security so nobody would be able to log in into your organization you just want to restrict and you want to create a more security right so restrict login is something so login like uh, you can say like there is ip for every machine right so sometimes hacker they will try to put it their ip they will try to do something else so in order to avoid those mis happening mischievous things we have to use the restrict login again uh, seven topic is determine uh, object access so it is again you know like coming you know it, it is again the part of like who will be able to access the object right and again eighth ninth tenth eleventh topic is the part of you know the user management where we have to provide who will be able to access the record right so these are the things we'll keep talking about in the you know later session so let's move on to the emails template and mass email so like you heard about uh, if you have to send an email in a bulk bulk like if you have to send email to 5000 people or more than 5000 so that is something you know called as a mass email well you do have facility to put it different type of email templates right so we'll keep talking about those different type of email templates one will once will be landed into this module seven so this is something will facilitate to send an email to the people right and the topics will be coming under the module seven is template type of template email to case so email to case is something like uh, you know uh, i hope you guys are aware about like if, if let's say if you have any problem with your bank right so what you will do either you will contact customer support right or else what you can do you will get it bank uh, uh, customer support mail id right so uh guys how many of you you know like send an email to you know the bank bank customer support or something you know like that have you done anybody okay so like i have done from my side so many of time so what i did like if i am if i'm having any problem so first of all try to connect with customer support and then after what i will do i will just uh, wrote an email to the bank support uh, you know uh, you know there is a bank support mail and then i'm getting auto generated keys which is assigned to the customer support but i just got notified as per as your email we have created one of the keys and track your request as per as your keys right so it's a similar thing and the second topic email to case so this is something a uh, very very good facility is provided into the salesforce so whomsoever is sending an email sending an email not anybody there will be a specific email for customer support so let's say i put it like uh, support at the rate techetraining.com right so once you will send the mail i'm just giving an example that is the salesforce based email so once you will send email to support at the red techetraining.com so automatically you will be getting a response that you got one of the keys this is the number so that is something related to email to keys the third topic is like again manage email and administration which is again the part of previous module and we'll keep talking about later this thing and module 8 is a uh, very very interesting topic like you know the automation this is very very generic topic hope 
everybody aware about the automation. So similarly here, Salesforce is providing uh, a few of the things which is out of the box. So workflow rules is one of them. We'll keep talking about web to case, web to lead. So module seven, there is a topic to email to case, right? It's same topic given into module eight, topic second and third, web to case, web to lead. So there is the only difference. Email to case means you are sending an email, right? While in module eight, topic two and three, web to case, web to lead means you are putting your queries through any website, right? So if you are doing those things from the website in order to differentiate the things, that's why it is mentioned like web to case. Similarly, web to lead, we'll keep talking about what is the importance of lead into the later session. And then fourth topic is auto response rule. Like again, as the name suggests, like whatever is the activity happen, you will be getting the auto response, right? And fifth one is validation rule. So validation rule is like, if you have to put validation, like whatever is the value you are getting, you just want to put it like, it should be not none, or it should be not empty, right? So those kind of validation, you can do it by using validation rule, right? And then sixth topic is assignment rule. This is really, really important topic. So like uh, into your organization, there will be lots of the thing happen. So assignment, you can say like homework or task. So whatever is the task will be created, right? You have to keep assigning those tasks as well, right? In the layman term, just assume it like there will be a bunch of tasks which is unattended, right? So we have to keep assigning those tasks to the specific people. In order to assign the specific people, we have to write an assignment and approval processes as well. So both are complementing with each other, right? So let's move on to the module seven, security data and data access. So again, uh, it's a, uh, you know, uh, one of the, uh, you know, the good part, like as we discussed earlier as with security stuff, profile, role hierarchy, and then permission set. So this is something again, you know, a detailed module about the security. So the first topic is like security settings and as it is said, security controls. We have to control some security aspects, sharing settings, again, sharing like, let's say, if you have to share your record, like just assume it like somebody wants to share something to somebody else and the audience will be you know you can imagine it in a group or something else so you can't do it manually those things so let's say if we have 100 people right if you have to give some some you know read write whatever you are not able to do it manually to give 100 people right so sharing settings is coming into you know that scenario where you have to share those things by putting one rule. So that is something you have to do it in the sharing settings. We'll keep talking about into the later session. Then again, field accessibility, like who will be able to access the field? Who will not be able to access the field? This is something we have to control it. Session settings, like valid session, invalid session, We'll keep talking about this topic as well. And then sixth topic is network access. So again, network access is like there will be a IP range, right? So whenever uh, you are working into your organization, right? So there will be, uh, you know, some organization specific IP is created. 
So it's a similar thing. You have to manage your network access into the Salesforce as well. We'll keep talking about, uh, you know, uh, you know, network access and session settings, right? So let's move on to module 10. So guys, uh, uh, so far, if you have any question, like uh, just keep the notes, we'll discuss about, and we'll, we'll do the discussion about, you know, those questions if you have any queries, right? Yeah, sure, definitely. So definitely after the course content, we'll go with a Q&A session as well. So don't worry about that. Yeah, so managing the data. So this is one of the, uh, you know, you can say uh, out of the box facility is provided by Salesforce. So let's say if you have data into the Excel sheet or if you are getting any data from the external system. So there is a facility provided by Salesforce. You can upload the data into the Salesforce. Uh, you can say uh, there, there's a few tools is provided by Salesforce. Import wizard is one of them, right? And the real limitation is there as well. So import wizard is one of the way you can import the data into the Salesforce, right? And there is a limitation of import wizard. So limitation is like it is importing only 50,000 rows at a time, right? So definitely you would be getting scared if you would be having, you know, more than 50,000 records right but need not to worry about that because the second topic is like mitigating those things by providing the data loader right so data loader is like it it will provide you know the facility to upload the data more than import wizard right and then second third topic is mass transfer records between users right so let's say uh, you have created you know the 10 records right you are the owner of those records right but if you want to transfer those records to the other user right so that's what uh, which is mentioned in the third topic like mass transfer records between users right and then there is a you know like backup facilities available into the Salesforce. So you can weekly export the data or you can take the backup manually as well, right? So you can do either one of the way, manual and automated way, right? And the fifth topic is mass delete records. So again, as the name suggests, like we can delete the records in a mass, not one, not two, maybe it would be 50, maybe it would be one lakh and whatever is the number it should be depend upon your require right and then module 11 is reports and dashboards this is really really important if you have to look at your activities so what is meaning of the activities which i'm talking about so let's say what are the number of records you have been creating what are the number of records have been updated, right? Or else you want to filter out the data on the basis of country, right? So you can do these kind of activity into the reports, not only reports, but you can generate the fan fancy dashboard as well. So dashboard like you can, you can visualize your data by getting some bar bar graph, pie chart. So these are the things we'll do it this module 11 and we'll follow the topics like run and modify the reports, create new reports with report builder, filter reports. We'll keep talking about the type of reports. 
and then how we can print, export, and email the reports as well. So it is really, really important if you have to send uh, an email report, right? And then build the dashboards, right? So let's move on to the module 12. So again, Visual Force page is your interface, user interface, where you can show the data, where you can uh, edit the data, where you can delete the data, right? So these are, you know, the pages where we can populate the data by reading, you know, the data from the Salesforce, right? So Visual Force pages is something where we can use the, you know, tags in order to show the data. I need not to confuse about that. We'll keep talking once we'll land into the module 12, right? Static resources, custom label, trigger, trigger. I hope you heard about. If you're not, then we'll keep talking about the trigger as well. It is really, really important to update the data into the bulk, right? With sharing, without sharing, we'll We'll do the discussion and different type of controller. We'll do the discussion. The module 13 is advanced Visual Force page. So module 12 is related with your basic or you know the foundation of Visual Force pages, right? That's why you know uh, we mentioned like module 13 is advanced Visual Force page, where you can actually implement the tags into the visual force page so action reason is one of the tag action status is one of the tag action support action function action polar is the tag which we can use it into the visual force page and we'll keep talking about these topic once we'll come into the module 30 and then six topic is custom setting and its type Render, re-render, and render as. We'll keep talking about these topics because if I will tell you as of now, maybe you will be getting confused. So just keep the topics into your mind. And advanced Apex is your 14th module where we can learn how to schedule a class, batch class, how to call the web service, how we can write a future class, what is the concept of wrapper, why we are using. So like basically these are the technical terms, right? So I will help you to connect at what time we have to use these technical aspects because it's really, really important when you guys will be getting a job and land into the job. So the main difference will be coming where when you are getting a requirement the time when you're getting a requirement, you won't be able to connect it, which thing you, you have to use. Either you have to use a schedule class, either you have to use a batch class. So we'll discuss the use cases as well. That is really, really important. So just keep the notes when we will be discussing about the use cases. That is really, really important to keep you updated when you will be landed into your job and you will do some practical stuff so you will be getting connected through the example right so we'll do those things as well and like as you know like cloud computing is one of the hot topic so so let me tell you this thing like what is a cloud computing as of now uh, like few of them you're working few of them uh, like you are getting your education, right? So now these days, most of the companies, like not uh, service-based, but product-based companies, they're working to create it everything as a service, right? So what what is the meaning of as a service? So let's say, uh, I'm just telling you the use case, let's say, you guys are using, uh, you know, the laptop and your colleague is also using the laptop. So services said, no need to put infrastructure 
into your premise, right? So what is the meaning of infrastructure? Infrastructure means you have to set up a server as well as its hardware and its software, right? Not even install the server and set up a hardware. You have to maintain those infrastructure as well. You have to buy laptop. You have to buy machine. You have to do lots of the thing to set up an infrastructure. So just imagine what, you know, uh, Amazon Web Services uh, and then Salesforce Cloud Computing, what they are doing. They are just disrupting, you know, the things by putting the cloud computing as a service, right? So as a service means you need not to purchase a laptop. You need not to purchase a server. You can go into the cloud computing. Configure your machine. If you want to put it you Ubuntu, you can put it there. If you want to put Linux, you can put it there and it will configure your machine on the fly on AWS. Right? So like similarly, Microsoft Dynamics, similarly, like other other, you know, there there are a few of the examples I'm saying that. So cloud computing is nothing but you are putting your infrastructure at one place and then you are providing those infrastructure globally as a service as a service means you, you are providing the services through your infrastructure it is not within your organization it is used globally right so in case of salesforce as well salesforce set up their server machines at various location and they are they are providing the services over the internet right so this is something what we are calling cloud computing again like uh, we are talking the same like cloud computing offers the ability to access software information that can be delivered on demand so i hope you you understand like uh, what i was discussing earlier it will give you the capability to uh, configure your machine on the fly, not as a hardware, but as a service, right? Over the AWS, over the, you know, Salesforce, over the rest of the, you know, the cloud computing services. So these are the, you know, terms, software as a service, platform as a service, hardware as a service. So these are the topics which is used in the cloud right so whatever is your services so let's say what is the mean of software as a service let let's say you have you have write a code for one product right now you don't want to give your product to your every individual uh, customer right so what you did you put your software at one place and then expose your software globally to the n number of client right so you have set up everything at one place and then providing the services to the customers similarly it has happened in case of platform as a services hardware as a services so aws is doing the same thing it is setting up 100 computers at one place and it, it is available globally to everyone right that's why it is mentioned like hardware as a service okay so so these are the few benefits of salesforce like how it is helping us we'll keep talking about these benefits when we will be starting the session right so you can you know like watch it these are the main things like email blast vertical responses these are the few things so once we'll land into the email part we'll discuss these benefits as well 
So again, the benefits of Salesforce. Okay, guys. So now it's your Q and A session. So, guys, uh, ask your question, and if you have any confusion, if you have any doubt, okay. I got it. Guys, you can uh, raise your hand as well so that I can unmute you and you can ask directly question to me as well. <clears throat> Give me a moment. Sorry, guys. So, Suman, question What is the prerequisite of so, Suman? Uh, there is nothing prerequisite, you just have to be, you know, the punctual. When I, I used to share, uh, you know. And I used to share the concepts. You just have to do the, you know, the practical from your side, what I will suggest you. And whatever is the assignment, which I will provide, you just have to accomplish. That is more than enough to acquire the knowledge of Salesforce and rest of the thing I will take care. Don't worry about that. All right. So any other questions? So guys, uh, do you have any question, any confusion? Uh, you can put it your question into the chat box. Yeah, uh, hi. I... Hello. Yeah, hi. Hello. Yeah, this is Dilip Rahija. Uh, well, let's see, I had the civil background, civil CRM, and I have worked with SAP and Oracle so solution also. And I was always motivated uh, towards Salesforce. So. So I don't think it's going to be a problem for me to understand everything. Uh, but there are a few basic questions. Uh, something like, how long your class is going to be for, and when is it going to start? Uh, that's the course logistic. And uh, then I had a couple of questions about the Salesforce itself. Can you, uh, can you tell me when are the classes going to start? When is this class going to start? Yeah, sure, Adilip. Uh, uh, like, uh, don't worry about like session. I hope like we'll soon start this session, probably to this Monday or maybe, uh, you know, like upcoming week, right? So I hope Rajinder will uh, keep you posted about that. And coming to your next uh, second question, like you said, like you already working on civil CRM, right? And you have knowledge of uh, you know the few CRM. So need not to worry about that. Like as you aware about, you know, huh, you have uh, one logic and there is a various implementation part, right? So Salesforce right. is so Salesforce uh -huh. is one of them. Yep, go ahead, Dilip. Yeah, yeah. I I think this is one of the many uh, many solution, and it is one of the top uh, top leading solution. So that's really very nice. 
and I have worked with some other solutions, uh, and not just the CRM, financial, supply chain, warehouse management, and all those uh, several things. Uh, I, I wanted to understand uh, what are the various subject matters, or so what are the different, um, you know, different fields, different uh, track tracks. Like one is CRM, other is uh, financial or uh, basic. Like I said, he has something for basic for administrator. So, so in Salesforce, how how can I build my how can I build my career in Salesforce? Great. Uh, I really appreciate your questions. So, Dilip, uh, uh, the, the very basic thing uh, which I want to tell you, if your foundation is strong, right? So, you, you can open your various game, the first thing. I'm just telling you the practical thing. Second thing, uh, the very, very important thing about Salesforce, it is updating itself uh, throughout the year three times, right? Okay. So they are they are keep updating themselves at very fast pace so, you, so even you won't be able to find out this advantages of salesforce that's why it is leading in terms of crm right okay fourth thing is they are pretty pretty fast in terms of other things as well so let's say analytics einstein right okay apart from that they acquired MuleSoft, right so in terms of technology, they are very, very fast. In terms of CRM, they are actually leading due to their changes, due to their everything, right? About your career perspective, it is, a, you know, it is one of the, uh, you know, the awesome CRM where you can handle your financial data. It is very, very secure. Where you can handle your, uh, you know, the legal data. It is very, very secure because, you know, uh, uh, I'm already working into the Salesforce rigorously. I, I am working into the integration as well. So I, I'm, 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 I'm very, very positive about because the way they are doing their update into the entire year yeah. three times. Yeah, I don't, I don't doubt that. I don't, I don't doubt that. I, uh, I went through uh, the table of content, uh, what you're going to go through in the class, in detail in the class, and yes. that was very nice. And it told me that uh, that they had dedicated schema, very optimized schema for CRM application. Yes. So, so if I uh, so let's say if I had to um, if I had to integrate uh, this CRM application with project of uh, somebody else, or let's say if I had to integrate CRM with uh, um, with the retail chain. Uh, retail chain uh, handling the customer calls and everything or on or factory on floor support so those kind of things so um, so I mean that, that means you know I'll be bringing in the new uh, new uh, new schema new solution in in it so so how does it integrate how would it integrate with uh, let's say Oracle or JD Edwards or any of the other financial solutions or project based solutions or maybe even warehouse management solution. Does it integrate with uh, anything else at this time? Yes, it is. It is absolutely integrated with uh, external system as well. And I'm working into my current organization. So I did it lots of the integration. So it is providing the capability to do the integration by web service call, the restful call, soap services call. It will definitely provide you those integrations. And I did it yeah. like SMS magic integration, payment gateway integration. So those things I have done that. Yes, the SOAP and REST APIs, they are very generic and they're very, uh, very helpful. Mm -hmm. And um, I, 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 I think it's still uh, uh, that, you know, still it, it would be some, it would be treated as a, like a black box, you know, my, uh, sales. access certain data in in other external systems and do the voice and do the vice versa is, is, is that the model we have actually uh, salesforce is providing very very easy implementation for the integration you can't imagine even you can uh, once uh, you will walk through with a module 
which I have provided. And as you work on the CVIL as well, you can you can start your work within three or four days. Okay, that's so the flexible say, the integration part. So let's say if uh, if we have EBS Oracle C business uh, OLTP solution, that's a totally high powered transaction processing system. Yes, I'm aware. Yeah, and if they want to use the Salesforce, mm -hmm. so can they? So they can use it. Um, I mean, there are some of the banks they have Oracle's um, analytics, and now they have Salesforce, uh, Salesforce uh, solution also. And it's not just the CRM thing; they are doing a lot more than CRM. Actually, I didn't even realize that uh, that uh, Salesforce is only CRM. They are they were looking into the financial systems and everything. That was really amazing. So that's when I was, uh, you know, getting motivated. How am I going to incorporate? See, I'm a solution architect by profession. I work for IBM, and I used to work for Oracle also. So my, so I integrate a number of different solutions, and I work with uh, other technologies also, whatever the customer has. So, uh, so I'm trying to, I mean, I can't really just simply, you know, integrate with using SOAP and REST API. It has to be something more than that. You know, so, uh, maybe... Uh... Like yeah. a, like okay, go, ahead. go ahead, good. Sorry. Yeah. 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 Please tell me your experience. So, Dilip, uh, uh, like uh, when the Salesforce was started, it was like started as a CRM, but now it is acting as a uh, enterprise solution as well, right? That's what I said. They acquired Microsoft. They acquired a few more, you know, technology-based company, right? why they acquired there is, is a specific reason i'm not talking about only the the you know uh, they acquired so i'm coming to your question so when you are talking about oracle oltp right if you have to uh, integrate with salesforce so again salesforce is providing the enterprise connection as well not one system now these days uh, salesforce is uh, integrating this various system uh, coming on to your third point if you have to integrate with Salesforce, you just have to assume who have to consume the data and who have to send the data. So if you have to get the data from your Oracle, so you have to publish web service URL. Am I right? Okay, that's, okay, that's the model, okay. Yes, that's the model, right? If, I, if you have to consume the data from Salesforce, then Salesforce has to possess some services, right? That's the model. Then again, if you're coming on to the security, definitely it is absolutely fine in terms of security. It is absolutely fine in terms of apart from integration. So when I'm talking about integration means there is some business aspects as well. And now these days, like next few 10 years, Salesforce is one of the large, uh, you know, uh, the source of data, which we are talking about data science, right? So okay, you can imagine. Right, right. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I, I I I see where you're heading, but now I, my my thinking is like let's say a retail chain, a retail chain has uh, so many different uh, stores and so many uh, warehouses where they get the data from, and they have vendors and uh, transportation uh, drop out points and delivery systems and everything. So all that data is coming there, right? So that's the massive database in itself, and uh, with a with the CRM. And it's not, I'm I'm looking at Salesforce as a solution, as a plugin to uh, to look into everything, not just uh, CRM to you know record the record uh, record the customer complaints or customer orders. A lot more than that. So you that, know, that's. I got your point. So that's what you will discover. Yeah, what, this so, so that would require, you know, that would require the, uh, using some of the very, very, uh, you know, very, very fast ETL tools, analytics, and other things. So I mean, does Salesforce use like uh, Informatica or Oracle Data Integrator or Cognos or some any of those things, or everything is pretty much like a PL cycle driven. I, I got your point. So that's what I'm saying. You will discover sure. those things during the session. And 
now these days uh, salesforce crm is one of the brand name under this umbrella it is providing the community web application you heard we can create the web okay. application you can create a web application under the community portal right you can create uh, you know the e-commerce under the e-commerce version of salesforce you can uh, create the case management that's what you said like this is not only the case management so it can provide there is uh, you know the various uh, you know the vertical of salesforce itself Yes. Yes. It is. It so, is. Uh, so is right. Okay. So the class we are going to go, uh, we are going to go, uh, go through is going. It will be covering mostly the fundamentals. How it is. Uh, what does it take to set up the Salesforce users, and security, and workload, and page layout, and different layout, and workflows, and other things. So yes. and that can be applied, and those techniques. Can be applied to any solution coming yes. out of Salesforce. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That yeah. That that's the big relief. That's good to hear. That. Yes. So you this are, is the foundation you know, for every the, vertical. Yeah. You are building the basic skill set. Okay. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank yes. you. That's all. Yeah. You're welcome. So, Suresh, uh, your question is. Okay, Suresh, question is, I am a FICO guy. Can I go for this course? Absolutely, Suresh. There is need not to worry about like you can you can uh, like work on Salesforce without any problem. You just have to concentrate it on the few things which I will walk through with the session. So when will will start the session? We'll keep talking about the use cases on the behalf of use cases. I will let you know where you have to. You just have to concentrate uh, for the session, right? And definitely, you are a technical guy, so definitely you would be able to uh, make it those things, and you need not to worry about them, right? So definitely, there is a nothing problem. Like either you are a FICO guy, you can do it without any problem. I will give assignment. You just have to do that, and I will let you know like what are the ways to do those practical sets. So you need not to worry about that. Coming to Rehan Khan, yes. How will I execute the practicals? So Rehan, uh, good question. Like, how will do those execution of the practicals? So need not to worry about that. Once we'll start uh, uh, to walk through with the session, uh, I will let you know like how you will do your practical session, because. Uh, there are some URLs provided by Salesforce. You have to create your credential, and then you can perform any kind of task within, uh, you know, their uh, within their org. So you can do all your practical session. You need not to worry about that. Whatever is the assignment I will provide you, you would be able to execute from your side as well by just logging into the Salesforce. So guys. Just remember, I'm talking about cloud computing, right? So cloud computing means you can you can do everything anywhere, right? So that's it uh, from my side. So I would like to share, you know, the contact slide. So if you need to, uh, you know, if you need, if you have any query related with session, if you have any query. Uh, related with the cost of training if you have any query related with session right so you, you can just note down you know the contact name mail id skype id and it would be helpful for you guys right and then uh, like uh, probably will start the session from monday from 6 30 am ist right guys so if you have any query related with the session time, if you have query related with the cost, if you have query related with course content, you can just contact it. Kalyan at the rate techetraining.com or else bolo kalyan at the rate yahoo.com else USA number, India number, WhatsApp and Skype train. Right guys. So it was nice talking to you guys. I got
one more question. Okay, that's fine. So guys have a nice weekend to you and enjoy your weekend. Then we'll meet again on Monday at same time, 6.30 a.m. So, okay, bye.